Hi there, welcome back if you are a subscriber and welcome if you've never been here before. My name is Anita and this is my sewing channel, Sewing Yogi. So I've been away for hmm, probably about five weeks, even though I said I was going to do another vlog quite quick after the last vlog and it all went Pete Tong. And if you're not from the UK, that means everything went wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, November was a complete and utter um, waste of time really. I don't know why, why I even bothered with November. I just stayed in bed for the whole of November. <laughs> I had quite a few disasters that happened. So I had my birthday in the first week of November, which was lovely. I uh, turned, turned 46 which is insane because in my head I'm still in my 20s. It is what it is and you know we all get older and um, then I think it was the week following my birthday everything went downhill. So yeah I cut my thumb quite badly. Um, I think I think it was the second week yeah it was the second week of November after I'd said I was going to do a vlog. I was in the kitchen emptying out the dishwasher and I had an accident with the potato peeler and you might be thinking how the hell can you cut yourself on the potato peeler well I managed it and it was quite a bad bad cut now um, it's healed nicely and it is only healed this week so it's been about what, three weeks now since I did it yeah it's three weeks today and it's only just healed the skin on the thumb is still very very raw because it's new fresh skin on there and yeah I cut it quite bad I didn't go to the hospital I did ring my husband when I did it and he said no you'll be fine just strap it up and that's what I did even though it was gushing with blood I was quite faint from looking at it but I've literally patched it up and I've just kept it dry and clean and it has healed um yeah I don't think I've ever I've cut, I've got cut myself quite a few times and that was really really bad I won't tell you too much about it because it was pretty horrific but I've been able to do anything with it so I've been have I've had it strapped up I have managed to sew this dress which I'm going to talk about talk about in a minute um and then I think the following day it was exactly the following day after I cut my thumb open um I dropped my phone in the studio the yoga studio and my phone went completely dead completely blank wouldn't work at all and I was like what has happened to my phone this is my lifeline to everything and that's what I do my filming on I do my filming on my phone because I don't have a camera I don't have any fancy equipment so that went out the window and anyway I had to get that fixed I did look into getting a brand new one because I thought well you know maybe it's cheaper to get a new one no it wasn't the phone I got my husband bought me and I looked it up, it's going to be about £500 to buy, so I'm like, mm, no, that's not happening. So I've had to get it fixed and the screen fixed and it was fortunately just the screen that's cracked and apparently in the newer phones, when you crack the screen, the whole screen just goes black. It's not like the old star where you, cr you could still use your screen when it's got a crack in it, because I've seen plenty of people with cracks in their phone and they're still working them fine. And I was like, well, why is mine not working? But anyway, it cost me £80 to get that fixed, which I was not happy about and then um, I had numerous other things that went wrong um, I had tried to do some sewing and I mean stupidly really I tried to attempt to make a bag and the bag I was chose to make was the sew over it grocery bag and I looked at that pattern thinking it was really going to be a nice breezy pattern easy to do take no long time no time at all to make I'd got an old fashion, an old curtain, like it wasn't even a curtain, it was lining for a curtain that used to be on our front door when we bought our house. Someone had put the, the lady that had the house before, put the curtain up, because it does get quite breezy and cold through that door. We don't have any double glazing in our house, it's all original doors, windows, everything. So everything is really drafty. We put this, we've got this um, curtain thing up, like, which we'd taken down and I wanted to use that fabric because it's quite good quality, really thick canvas fabric. And um, I attempted to make this bag out of that fabric and I wanted to ideally dye the, dye the fabric, make it a different colour. After about a week of trying to make this bag, I just would give up. I was just like, this is ridiculous. I can't get my head around this bag. It doesn't make sense. 
it's really complicated. I don't know why I can't get my head around it. It was just really annoying and I just had to throw it. I just it's in that corner over there. Just don't I'm looking at it. And then I attempted to make some pyjama shorts. I've got the Luna pyjamas that I made. So over at Luna, Luna pyjamas in this fabric. It's like a flannelette sort of a black pol polka dot sort of um, fabric. And I love the pyjamas, but I don't wear the actual leg parts, the pyjama bottoms. <laughs> I forgot what they're called. I don't wear the pyjama bottoms in bed because they get really hot and my legs, I don't, I don't like anything being on my legs, so I prefer to wear shorts. So I thought, well, I'll make some shorts to match. Anyway, I thought well, I'll use the pyjama bottom pattern from the Sorority one and I cut them out, just cut them off. Didn't take into consideration that when you wear pyjama shorts, they tend to be a bit wider. And I didn't take that into account and they're not wider, they're just basically the same same leg thing and they just look odd. So that was a kind of, I've just abandoned that as well when I realised that, just put that aside, can't bother to do that. So I was like, oh, it's just awful. Anyway, I've got this pattern, bought this pattern probably, was it last year or the year before? I think it might be last last winter. And it is a McCall's pattern, so it's McCall's 7973. I'll show you the cover, you can see, and I have chosen to do a kind of mishmash of all the different variations because I didn't like the specific one on their own. So I'm done B as in the top bodice part here and I've done C and D sleeves so you can see that they're just a sort of... Um, is that focus it's like a an elasticated uh, sort of poofy sleeve and then I have done the skirt of A so it's got like a little frill at the bottom and um, yeah this is it this is the dress now I made this as a kind of twirl a wearable twirl because I have got some other fabric that I want to make this out of but now I've made it and the fabric is sitting there I'm thinking do I actually want to make this dress out again do I want to make a different dress I can't decide I have got another pattern that I'm thinking about doing which I'll show you afterwards but anyway onto this dress I shall stand back so you can have a look at it and hopefully the lighting here isn't too bad I've gone all out and bought one of those ring light things that everybody has <laughs> and didn't know what these were until the other week so I was like why are my pictures also really dark and I can never get good lighting in this house this house is so dark so it's like I need a light, what can I do? And I did actually think about getting an actual proper photographer's light. Um, but then when I did some research, I found out that these new ring lights, woohoo, fancy pants, I didn't know these existed. And so I purchased one and that's why I'm looking a bit different maybe on the camera today because I've got my new fancy pants ring light on. So I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see this properly because it has, you know, it is going dark here. So I'll stand back and let you have a look at it. Okay, so this is the dress and it is a really, really enjoyable make. I really enjoyed making this. I think it's probably because of the trauma of making, trying to make that bag and then the shorts. So this was just a breeze. I loved it. Um, it has lovely sleeves. So I've chosen this one with the elastics um, on the sleeves and it has a waist tie and it goes around to the back here. So it's quite voluminous when you don't have it tied. And I actually think um, the size, the sizing on this is very, very large. And I think I'm gonna downsize for the next one. It has pockets, which I absolutely love. Um, so this is the top, which is I've chosen to make the version B for. And this tie here is actually meant to be cording. It's me it says cording on the, um, or cord on the pattern. And I didn't like the idea of that. So I've actually just made um, a bias binding of the same fabric. And it has like a frill neck. So it's got like a little frill around the top, um, which you can see it on that side maybe better, um, which I really love. And that just ties up. Like I say on the pattern, it says it's cord, um, and I didn't really know what that meant. I've never worked with that kind of thing before, and I just couldn't be bothered to try and search for it and buy any. So, yeah, and then this tie, obviously, is just attached at the front. So you have, like, a little band here. I hoping you can see that. 
and it's gathered on the bodice just at the front and then the skirt is gathered so the skirt piece is gathered all the no is it i can't remember no it's just the no there's just the front panel sorry it's gathered on the front panel then you have side panels and then you have a back panel and again i think it's just the back that's gathered on the skirt and the back actually no that's elastic in it I've just remember it's elastic in there so it's a really strange construction i'll just send, stand up on the steps so you can see um the bottom of the skirt so this is skirt for a and i have shortened it so i can wear it with tights i don't think um a longer skirt on me is very flattering especially if you're wearing tights so yeah um that's the skirt it's quite a nice flowy floaty skirt quite nice just absolutely love the pockets i love pockets anyway but i'm really chuffed it's got pockets yeah and um yeah i think it's a little bit big so I'm going to definitely downsize next time, but I shall tell you about the sizes in a second um, because you can see here it's quite voluminous and I don't need that extra there, I don't think. Um, but apart from that, I think it's a really lovely fit and I mean I have done some adjustments to it to make it fit me. I did make a 12 for this. So yeah, I absolutely love it. I really, really do love it and I wasn't sure about this pattern. I wasn't sure it was actually going to work, but I do love it now. I'm really pleased I made it. Okay, so I made a twirl of this because I knew with Impulse pants they're always a little bit large for me on the shoulders and it's never a case where I have to actually do a small shoulder adjustment as such because the neck was fine and because it has this tie, um, the neck part of it was fine, it didn't need adjusting there, all it needed was my seam to be taken up. So all I've done there is just sliced off across on the shoulder seam and brought it up slightly. And I think when I made my twirl, the underarm was just a little bit tight. So I think I've added some there. Let me have a look. Yeah, the underarm seam. I've taken it up to a centimetre instead of having it as a 1.5, sorry, one, yeah, 1.5 centimetre. I've actually reduced that down to one centimetre because it felt just a bit tight up here in, in the... Um, armpit area um, and then yeah I've just shaved off a centimetre it wasn't very much I had to take off but it does make all the difference I think when you take off a little bit and it fits on your shoulder just perfectly um, yeah so those are the adjustments I did to the actual bodice top so I think I've made what have I done I made a size 6 on the shoulders so I always try and make the smallish size for my shoulders um, because they all tend to um, just be, I don't know, they're just always a bit, bit smaller. And then I've braided to an eight for the bust area. And that's why I think this bit here fits me really, really nicely. But because of the size chart, it tells you for a size um, that my waist is, which is 28 inches, just get the pattern. Um, for the waist, I think it was coming up, but it, I needed to make a size 14 for the waist and I just thought that's a bit of a massive leap from size 8 to 14 but I know that McCall's patterns tend to be a bit weird with that for my body shape but I don't know why but I always have to go up quite a few sizes to, to my waist measurement um, so that's what I did I made a size 14 and I don't think I needed to because of the way it's constructed and it's quite voluminous around um, the waist area because you're tying it with this tie I could have probably got away with making a size 12 maybe even a 10 because you're putting elastic in and I pulled the elastic to as tight as I could get it without it looking silly and I still think it's a good bit a little bit big so yeah it's very roomy on the waist area and yeah like I say this part up here fits me perfectly so I'm really pleased that I did that size and I'm glad I made the 12. I always have to now remember to make a 12 for everything because it's just not worth making a mess of things, is it? I really dislike messing with it, like wasting fabric. Even if it's fabric that's not extra special, don't like wasting fabric. I've just got something ingrained in my brain that's like, don't waste stuff. So yeah, and then what else did I do for this? Um, the length of the... I'm trying to think of the bodice. I didn't take off anything off the bodice length. Um, I think it fits me just probably fine. 
I may take off a little tiny bit, shave off a tiny bit next time, but not very much. And then I've taken off two centimeters of, um, what were we saying, two centimeters? It's gotta be two inches. I've written two centimeters, that can't be right. It's gotta have been about two inches. <laughs> so I took off two inches off the actual hem of the main skirt panel, so not the frill, the main skirt panel, just estimating that that would be around okay, right? And then when it came to it and I tried it on with the frill, and the frill was quite a deep frill, it was like quite big, I've had to take off five and a half centimetres off the frill bottom because I felt that if I had taken that off, if I was taken off the frill back off again and then took it off the main skirt panel, the ratio wouldn't have looked right. I kind of showed it to my husband and said I could either take it off the bottom of the frill or I can take it off the skirt. And he said the same thing, no, the ratio will be all wrong for me because I'm smaller and more um, shorter. So I didn't want a massive frill at the bottom. It probably would have been worked out the same size as the actual skirt panel for me, so it would have looked a bit weird. So I've taken it off the bottom of my frill and I think it works fine. It just looks great. And that is about it, I think, for my alterations for this. So as I said, the skirt is the skirt from version A. The neck and the bodice is version B and then the sleeves the version C and D. And I didn't take any off my sleeve length either, which is strange for me because I think I've got short arms. But there you go. So there's something to bear in mind. Um, I always put my measurements on the description underneath my vlog. So if you wanted to compare, if you needed any, um, you know, comparison for if you were gonna make this pattern, then I will put them down underneath. So yeah, the, the size chart for this is obviously the usual, usual for um, a McCall's pattern. So it's a, this is one where it goes from 6 to 14 and then they'll probably do another one which I think is probably what 14 to the larger sizes. I never know what the, the um, sizing is on for McCall's patterns for the, for the next one up. Um, but that covers a bust of 30 and a half. Sorry, I've got my glasses on, can't see this tiny writing. Uh, so yeah, bust of 30 and a half inches to um, size 22. So yeah, you can get this in a size 22, which is a bust size of 44, but this one only goes up to 14. So that's a bust size of 36. And yeah, so for me, when it says on the, yeah, size 14, the waist is 28 inches. Now, I'll take them off because you'll see the glare of that, that ring light. Look, I just look a bit odd now, don't I? <laughs> anyway, um, now yeah, I would definitely downsize next time. I'm going to make this again, for sure, because I really love it. I think it's perfect dress for winter because of the sleeves and the little ruffle around the neck. I just think it's really lovely. Um, this fabric, again, it was purchased two years ago. It feels to me like it's like a polyester sort of crepe. I don't think it's, um, yeah, I can't work it out. It's like a polyester sort of, it's like a crepe fabric. It's not a viscose, I don't think. So yeah, um, but anyway, it floats really nicely, it drapes really nicely, it's perfect for what this is. Now making this pattern was probably really, I would say definitely um, quite easy. The instructions again, with McCall's patterns, I struggle with. They're not the easiest of instructions. They never are for these things. They're so limited. They don't tell you to finish off any of your scenes. So you do have to remember just to keep checking in. Does Do I need to sort of finish a scene before I attempted this? And I, there was one stage with the pockets where I'd forgotten I'd put my pockets in already and then realized I needed to finish off the scene. So I could have done with doing my skirt pieces first and then doing the pockets and then putting them on. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things, isn't it, with these patterns, you've just got to kind of gauge it yourself, I think, with, you know, try and read ahead a bit. I'm not very good at reading ahead in patterns. I'm one of those people that, I'm a visual learner, so I generally just look at the pictures. <laughs> I look at the pictures first and then go and go, hmm, okay, so what's happening in that picture? And then I'll read what it says. Um, and so if I get a pattern and then I try to read ahead or look at it before I've even attempted the pattern, it's like looking at a different language. 
it's just like meh. blurry 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 can't see anything don't know what's going on doesn't make any sense to me um because i have to actually be at that stage of the sewing process for me for it to click in my brain to make it work so there's no point in me reading ahead in patterns i just don't it doesn't work and i think i did read somewhere that you're not supposed to but you know it's one of those things isn't it i think it depends on who you are and how you learn and you know if you get on with that kind of thing so i definitely suggest maybe just skim the next few steps just to see if you need to overlock or finish your seams do whatever you need french seam if you wanted a french seam <gasps> i wouldn't bother but yeah um yeah, the only particular part I found was a little bit tricky on this pattern is this neckline. I've never done a ruffle on the neck before like this. Again, the instructions are not particularly amazing. So I think for the neck, I'll just put that away and I don't know why because I wanted to look at it. Where is the neck bit? So I was there literally looking at this, reading the instructions. And again, the, the, the words were just like, Blah 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 blah. It's like I'm not reading. It's like I am reading a different language. It's like blah 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 blah. What does that mean? I've no idea. So I was there. I was there with the pictures. I don't think it's on this one. Is it on this one? Yeah, I was there with the pictures, and I've got my magnifying glass because my sight, my eyesight's not good. It's getting worse actually from sewing. To be honest, it's got worse in the past few years. I'm there with my glasses on. And I'm there with this, and I'm like, well, what's actually happening in that picture there? How is this neckline? Do, how's this neckline looking? So I'm there with my uh, magnifying, and I did work it out eventually, but I did sew it first and then realised I'd done it wrong and I had to unpick it and do it again. So it's just about lining up these points here, these little ties, with the sort of flush with the front of this neck here it doesn't explain any of that and there are little dots that you're supposed to follow but even so when you've done the dots it doesn't really give you an indication as to where they're supposed to sit and i was trying to look at the, the pattern cover and i'm there again with my magnifying glass saying what does it look like on on the picture anyway i eventually worked it out so it is meant to sit flush with the front here and you do, when you're sewing it, have to kind of tuck out these ends out the way so you don't catch them when you're sewing it. It's just got a facing on the inside, which is a little bit annoying, I must admit. It keeps flopping out. So it's not a very big facing. I'm going to make that much bigger next time I do it because it just keeps flipping out and there's no way of stitching it down. I mean, you could probably put tiny, tiny stitches in it, but they might look noticeable in this fabric. I don't know. And the back's the same. It's really hard. It just doesn't want to press this fabric. That's the only other thing about this fabric. It did not want to press. So I was trying to not scold the fabric, obviously, using a pressing cloth. I don't I don't have a pressing cloth. I just use a bit of um, another bit of viscose fabric that I've got. And I just place that over the top. But it's really trying, trying and challenging just to get this to sort of stay down. Um, yeah, and... The gathering, I think I may have gathered this a bit too much because I've got slight puffiness here on the shoulder. You might not be able to see it that well, but I can see it. But again, you know, we're always a bit more um, critical, aren't we? It sort of just puffs up a little bit around here and it's a little bit, doesn't quite sit flat enough. I don't know if it's on more on that side. You may be able to tell. It's just a little bit sort of, yeah. Can you tell? Can you see? just a little bit weird it doesn't quite sit quite how I'd want but you know that's fine it's still I can live with that I don't think anyone else is going to notice um so yeah the neck is a little bit tricky but it's not uh it's not impossible you just take your time as I always say with these things as a beginner if you wanted to have a go have a go just take your time maybe get your magnifying glass out look at those pictures you may be better at me at reading the instructions and make sense to you but you know for me oh uh, those are my call patterns. They are that's the only thing I dread about making big four patterns is the instructions. They're just not very good. But I get there in the end. So yeah, so making this was obviously challenging as well with my bad thumb. It was, yeah. I persevered, however, I wasn't gonna give up. So that's why I've only made this one thing in November because of the disaster with the bag and then the shorts pajama bottoms and nearly chopping my finger off and breaking my phone 
all that <laughs> all that stuff this is the only thing I have got made so I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about this dress other than I really really love it and it's really it's really warm actually it's warmer than I thought it was going to be because I thought because it's quite a sort of drapey fabric it wasn't going to be that warm but it actually is really nice and toasty um I mean obviously we're not in the depths of winter yet it might be a bit chilly if I'm just going to wear it out so I could probably wear something underneath it maybe I don't know but yeah um yeah and then I made my own bias binding I forgot to say because of the fact that it is a cord that they say to put in it which I'm not convinced by I don't know if I would want the, I don't know if I'd want the cord I did actually put in some already bought bias binding and I chose a black one because I couldn't have any I didn't have anything that matched this color and it looked hideous <laughs> I put it or I put it in and I said to my husband, I was like, what do you think this looks like? And he's like, mm, I don't think it really goes, does it? <laughs> Which is a nice way of saying that looks hideous. <laughs> Take it off. So I took it off and thought, you know what? I've just got to be good and try and make some. Because I, I did basically that because I couldn't be bothered to make bias binding. But, you know, I had enough fabric left to make the bias binding. And so I've done that. And you know, I love it now. And it's much, much nicer. It's much better. Um, anything else I've got to say about this pattern? Mm, not really, other than, um, yeah, nothing else. I don't think there's anything else, anyway. So, I was going to make this dress again in a John Caldor, is it John Caldor? Yeah, John Caldor fabric that lovely Minerva have sent me as a gift, obviously. So that I can make something and put it on their site. Um, I asked for this fabric. Oh gosh, that's going to make the screen go weird. Just cover my face up a bit. So yeah, it's um, black with red and white flowered print on it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful crepe. It has the most amazing feeling, this crepe. I mean, it's really beautiful. Um, it's got an amazing drape to it and I was going to make this out of this now I've made it I'm not convinced I should do that because of this big print I'm thinking that because of the big print it might not work I'm not quite sure maybe you can give me some advice and think would this work I have got another pattern I was thinking of and it was free in Love Sewing magazine last month I think I just grabbed the pattern so I always do this, I start off doing a review and then I start going off on a tangent. So this pattern is the Butterick 6705 and I've actually wanted this pattern for such a long time. I keep seeing, I kept seeing it and I really, really wanted this pattern and then it came, it came free with the uh, Love Sewing magazine. Can you just see that on the lights reflecting on that? Sorry, quite badly. But it's a beautiful little dress. I'm thinking of this version here. Um, with the little frill on the bottom. I don't think they vary that much, although I do quite like the sleeves on the middle one, which is kind of like, has a little um, kind of cuff on there. Just about see that there. Um, and then that version, I think, is just a similar one to this with the elastic, and then that one is like a bell sleeve. So I am thinking of that pattern for this but then I also thought this fabric would look quite nice in a maxi style dress. So, what do you think? Should I do a maxi dress in that? A completely different pattern? This one can be made in a maxi dress, I think. It does do a longer version in this one, but I don't know if it's maxi length. It may be maxi length because it's got a big massive tear at the bottom on the version for C. And also, I'm umming and ahhing. <sighs> I can't make my mind up about the neck for this one. It's got like a necktie. Can you just about see that? Um, it's not gonna focus, is it? It's a bit blurry. Um, yeah, it's got a necktie and I wasn't sure if that kind of style suits me because I'm small up here. And then because I'm small up here, I don't tend to have things that are too, I think I've said this before. I don't have things that are too voluminous or flouncy around my top half because I'm quite small here. I don't know. 
whether that would work. But you never know. If it's a maxi length baby, it would work. I don't know. I can't make my I can't make my mind up what I'm gonna do with this, and I've got to I've got to make something out of it quite soon. So um, yeah, I love it anyway. It's beautiful. They had a, they had a different colorway to this. They had a a, a navy with uh, sorry a black with the a blue flower, which um, was beautiful as well. Which I was gonna I asked for both. I said either one will do me, and I'm so glad I got the one with the red flower because I hadn't realized how big the flowers were on it. If it had been a smaller flower, I probably would have liked the blue flower. But because it's so big, I don't think that the big blue flower would have worked on my skin tone. But uh, I don't know. So anyway, yes, that's the uh, review for this. Um, if it was a kind of review, um, me making this um, in the November, and that's all I've made. And now I feel a bit disappointed. But what can you do? There's nothing that you can do about that um so anyway i'm gonna get up another vlog this weekend or next week regarding what i'm making but it's all gift stuff so any family and friends you're banned from watching you're not allowed to look at it so watch this one but don't watch the next one what i'm gonna do because it's got basically all the stuff i'm making for christmas i really want to show you the stuff that i'm making for people because obviously that's ma mainly what i'm making in december i am going to try and make um the Mayfair dress because Stitched Up, Rachel from Stitched Up uh, did a sew along last night and she did the sew along for the Mayfair dress, Nina Lee Mayfair dress, which I watched, it was amazing. I stayed there through that whole thing, loved it, she was amazing on it. Um, and I got the pattern out, I traced it off, but as I was standing there and she was like, started making it, I realised, ah, I don't know about any of my adjustments. What do I need to do for adjustments? I've never made, I don't want to make it and then it will be wrong, if that makes sense. I don't want to, like, I don't know if I need to change the bodice length. She was saying she was making the maxi length dress, dress and it's perfect for her and she's 5'11 or something. So I'm probably going to have a hack bat skirt in half for it to fit me. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, and then I suddenly just got all um, doubtful and so started doing something else instead. But I still watched it, it was really good anyway. Um, yeah, so what was I talking about? Yeah, so I wanted to make the Mayfair dress, I want to squeeze that one in. And I also want to make, yeah, it's mainly gifts. I'm making some that are crafty type, type gifts and some that are actually clothes. So family and friends, be warned, do not watch that. I know what you like. Don't be nosy and don't be checking it out, thinking that you could sneaky peek at what I'm making you. <laughs> um, I'm going to do that and then um, that is definitely going because I'm going to film that right now after I've done this one. So there's no excuse. Yeah, so I think that's it for today. Um, I hope you've liked my vlog and what I've made in November, even if it was tiny one thing. But um, yeah, I'm going to be back very soon with another one. And um, if you liked what you see today, please give it a thumbs up. And thank you all to the people who have recently subscribed. Really, really, you know, super amazing, like chuffed that you are happy to kind of watch me ramble on. And um, yeah, if you're not subscribed, then please do subscribe. That would be amazing. Awesome. And yeah, I shall see you next time. I hope you're all well. I hope you're doing loads of sewing and you're doing a better job than me with Christmas looming. And I will talk about Christmas in my next vlog. I'm watching oh, I'm watching so many Vlogmases and I'm absolutely loving them. I'm just, I think it's actually keeping me going because yeah, there's some amazing ones out there. I really, really love it. I'm addicted. I'm like literally getting up in the morning thinking, right, whose vlogs can I watch now? I'm just, I'm loving it. So yeah, and I'll just see you next time, everyone. I hope you're all really well and doing loads of sewing and yeah, and hoping life is good for you. I shall see you next time. Sending you love and light. Bye.